Mercury, too high, it's, even though it's a low amount. Lead, okay. Chromium, okay. Chromium is not the worst health hazard in the world, actually. Cadmium, not good, too high. It's a bad actor, by the way. Arsenic, almost half as high as the standard. Da 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 da. So, yes, bottom ash has less of these pollutants than coal, but by definition, according to the EPA 2000, the year 2000 standards, it is, in fact, a hazardous waste. You heard it first here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Um, potential environmental impact, just to give you an idea if you didn't know these things already. Mercury and lead, very nasty. You don't want to eat that stuff because uh, it basically destro destroys your nervous system. Uh, cadmium has been lim linked to uh, hypertension, kidney, uh, prostate cancer, things like that. Uh, arsenic, you know what arsenic does. It's a poison. And uh, uh, chromium is a carcinogen may cause uh, neural, again, uh, uh, nervous uh, abnormalities, etc., uh, particularly in high doses. Again, chromium is not the worst of all these, but these are pretty bad. And they're all in bottom ash. Now, this is an interesting thing, too. I did a little experiment where I put um, ash in water, and I just left it there. In fact, I left it there for five months. <laughs> And uh, the idea was that I wanted to maybe get the water analyzed just to see what would happen if you put water in contact with this stuff to see how it would pollute the water, if it does at all. Uh, what, what I found was very interesting, uh, which is that it's quite soluble. I'll show you the picture here in a minute. Uh, and it has to be if you're going to use ash to melt snow, which they do on the highways sometimes. They've spread it out. And it has to melt in order to be something that lowers the melting temperature of the snow, see, so that it'll melt for you, just like salt would do. So let me show you the next um, pictures here. This, I, I will admit that this is a, a fake picture because I don't have a picture of the original uh, ash that I threw in because I didn't think I needed to. Uh, but this is what it would have looked like, and you can see the ash here with the water on top. This is a real picture. This is what it looked like five months later. And I don't know if you can tell where you are, the difference, but there's a lot of ash here and there's almost none in there. What's left are little black particles, which are probably unburned coal. And uh, if you look at the analyses of ash, you'll see that up, uh, our, our an analyses give about 13% organic matter, which is probably indicative of the unburned coal. And remember that unburned coal would have more of these metals, et cetera, than, than even the, the ash itself would have. And you can see it in there. But it definitely dissolves. It also, it dissolves better in acid water. This is one of that I, an experiment that I did just recently where I put some acidified water here. This is just deionized water, which has no acid in it whatsoever. And this one's nice and clear. Look at the color here. Obviously, acid is having an effect on the uh, dissolution of the ash, and remember that all natural rain is acidic. So that would exacerbate the problem of dissolving this stuff. And I, I think you can probably understand why I'm, I'm pressing on this, because if it dissolves in rain and flows into your environment, then that's not good. Contaminate your soil and your streams, or it could anyway. Uh, these are some of the things that um, could happen to uh, make the ash uh, uh, a problem in, in, uh, in contaminating the environment. If it's pulverized on the roads, you know, from traffic and that sort of thing, and then the winds pick it up, it could become part of the uh, particulate contamination in the air. Um, if it's uh, dissolved in uh, rain or snow melt, which uh, I've kind of shown here that it can be very easily, it can contaminate streams and soil. And the last thing there has to do with mostly how it would be retained in the soil. Around here, this would be very easy. We have a lot of organic matter a lot of times in our soil, which is a source of carbon. And carbon will help to fix it. Takes, carbon takes away oxygen. And so these heavy metals, if they don't have oxygen, they're going to glom onto the sulfur, which is in the soils, and make sulfides, 
which means they would have a long-term staying power in that, that situation. And the hydrogen that you see here can fix these things. We have a lot of hydrogen percolating up through our soil all the time because guess what? We are one of the big centers of natural gas. And natural gas, which is CH4, carbon hydrogen taken four times, when it disassociates, it makes hydrogen. And it's coming up through the soil all the time and that could help reduce uh, the soil and produce sulfides with heavy metals, particularly if the heavy metals are being provided by an outside source. So this is what my recommendations would be. A lot of this is just common sense. Uh, we have done chemical analyses of the ash itself, but what we really need are analyses of the soil and water. That should not be paid for by private people. This should be done by the county, by the state, uh, maybe by the federal government. And uh, it, it's, to me, it seems like a real no-brainer. We, we could put this whole thing to rest if they would simply do the, the right chemical analyses around where these things are being dumped. Uh, we should include things like uranium and thorium, which usually are not uh, analyzed in these things. But that could be a real problem. Uh, because we know that uranium thorium is in coal and there's a possibility that there's residues in the ash too. And then pressure, uh, the, the last thing there, pressure the county, the state, the federal government to actually provide us with uh, safe limits on coal ash, etc. And to establish a rational schedule, a timely schedule of environmental testing so that uh, we, we know the, uh, the condition of the environment uh, that, that may result from uh, this ash uh, use on our highways. All right, with that, I am all done, and I'll turn it over to Diane. Thank you very much.